to be. And uh, not only are we enabling folks to express themselves, and ideally uniquely on the web, unlike the cookie cutter that all the social sites try to put you into, the cookie cutter looks, um, we're doing it in a way which is standards-based, interoperable, <laughs> uh, based on open source, increases the amount of freedom on the web, uh, which is very key, certainly to me, and the most important thing uh, that I work on. Um, as we're renewing our commitment to the open web as a whole, it's also been kind of an exciting time to just be following technology news, because a lot of people have been talking about Web3 and the decentralized web. Um, I'm not going to dig super deep into defining Web3, because I don't think anyone really knows what it means. <laughs> uh, but it is a buzzword that's now being talked about on NPR, Wall Street Journal. Uh, it's being talked about in the context of global st uh, standards. And to me, what Web3 embodies is two essential ideas, decentralization and individual ownership. And for me, those are both things that WordPress is both well poised to be already doing and to continue doing for some time to come. Let's talk about decentralization and ownership. Um, WordPress in specific, but open source in general, you can participate in it from anywhere. There's 30 of us here. <laughs> but the WordPress community, as we saw, is thousands and thousands of people, uh, 15,900 translators. Um, you can host a site anywhere on any infrastructure that you like. You can create your own forks of WordPress. Any person here could create uh, Penguin Press or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> uh, take the code and take it on your time. And you're really only limited uh, by your time and creativity, which is also an aspect of at least my favorite Web3 projects. The other key is individual ownership. So in WordPress, as with some of the best Web3 products, um, you own your own content, the code, everything to run it without any payment to WordPress. You can move your content from one site to another easily. In fact, WordPress's export format has become the de facto standard for all their CMSs. <laughs> so even like a Squarespace, and kudos to Squarespace for doing this, supports when you export from Squarespace, they actually export in the WXR, WXR format, which is basically just something we did like 15 years ago, which is take RSS2 and add on a few extra XML fields to create a standards-based uh, WordPress export format. And you have the four freedoms of open source and the GPL, um, which allow for ownership for every individual, including every person in this room or every person watching this owns WordPress just as much as myself or Mike Little do, and an individual, individuality of expression. Uh, keep this in mind, and I would say apply the filters of everything in Web3, the NFT space, et cetera. There's been an incredible amount of innovation I think this uh, has also attracted some hucksters <laughs> and some uh, folks kind of hustling things that aren't truly open. So you all are very familiar with WordPress. So for every project which is asking for your money, dollars, or for you to pay the cost of a house for a picture of an ape, <laughs> you should ask, does it apply the same freedoms which WordPress itself does? And how closely does it hew to and to increasing your individual agency and freedom in the world. Uh, 